lot of good mornings in the chat box. So good morning and welcome uh, to all uh, on the second day of this conference and the first session. Yeah, so uh, I think people are still joining. So it's 10.30. Let's wait for like three more minutes and we'll start at 10.33. Okay. Okay, I think we should begin. Huh? Yeah, thank you, Harita. Uh, so again, good morning, everyone. Uh, I see, uh, yeah, around 67 people here. Uh, so maybe school, because this is school college session. Yeah, so maybe some people are not here, but people will join. Uh, my name is uh, Shweta Naik. I am a member of uh, Mathematics Teachers Association. Uh, and I'm also part of Math Education Group at the Homi Bhabha Center for Science Education. Some of you I already know and uh, you might know me, uh, but uh, today is another chance for us to uh, know each other. Uh, so today's panel uh, is going to be, actually it was designed and assembled by Dr. Jyoti Sethi. She's a teacher in uh, Delhi school uh, and she put up this team together uh, for a, the very important discussion. But unfortunately she has to teach today <laughs> and she was not given any leave. So she couldn't come. So I am uh, doing her job. Uh, but she's also happy, she told me to say this, that she's happy to meet her students face to face. Uh, schools have started in Delhi face to face. So she's meeting her students today for the first time after a long time. So she's also very happy about that. <laughs> okay, so uh, the panel uh, discussion today, you must have already looked at in the timetable that it is for uh, voices of teachers looking at the challenges, efforts, uh, and you know, innovations that mathematics teachers undertook during this uh, pandemic period. Uh, and all of us have some uh, bits of experience that we would like to share here. And this is a, uh, today's the opportunity to do that. We have four uh, teachers, very passionate, uh, hardworking and in the field all the time. It was very difficult for uh, even for me to get them on phone because they were all the time in the school. Uh, so we have today with us uh, uh, Neha uh, Gauri, uh, Chanchal and Umar. I'll introduce each of them and then uh, they will be uh, sharing their experiences for uh, 10 to 12 minutes uh, and then we'll open the uh, floor. Of course, uh, while you're listening, if anything comes to your mind, please do type it in the chat box uh, and uh, we will take up uh, those questions, comments later. Yeah. Okay. Somebody is uh, asking that they don't can't let in. Anyway, I'll get back to them. 
so the I request all the panelists uh, just to say hi and switch on your video so that all of everybody can see the, uh, you. So there is Neha Agarwal. Uh, yeah, hi. there is Mohammad Omar. Hi, there is Gauri. Hi. Yeah, hi Gauri. And then there is Chanchal. Uh, okay, I think she's. You're on mute, Chanchal. Oh, okay. Okay. Hi, hi. Yeah. Yeah, Chanchal is in school. She told me that she'll be in the school. Okay. So let's uh, begin uh, with Neha. Neha is going to start. Uh, yeah. So uh, Neha is a senior school teacher in Delhi. Uh, and she'll be teaching specifically, she'll be talking about specifically some challenges of teaching mathematics and relationship building with uh, senior school students today. Uh, Neha uh, has done her post-graduation in mathematics from IIT Delhi uh, and she's working in the CBSE curriculum for almost now 10 years. Yeah, and uh, she likes to teach in an uh, experiential mode. Uh, she believes that student needs to learn through experience. So she puts a lot of effort in it. Uh, and she has been associated with NCRT, CBSE Diksha, uh, and some wide experiences under uh, innovation and project teaching in mathematics. So, yeah, over to you, Neha. Uh, and you have around, I'll remind you after uh, like 10 minutes, you have up to 12 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Shweta. Good morning, respected panelists. Thank you for inviting me for this prestigious conference wherein we can share our experiences of teaching mathematics during the pandemic. Allow me to share my screen, please. Thank you. Okay, so I would like to contribute to this discussion on teaching of mathematics during the pandemic by throwing a question to all of you that crossed my thoughts during the past one year. Whatever we do, definitely has or should have an objective behind it. When it comes to teaching senior school students, has the objective behind teaching of mathematics changed during online classes? What was this objective? Has learning in senior school become one dimensional because we have a certain fixed amount of syllabus to cover in a limited period of time? Well, my objective while delivering my subject has been bringing mathematics to life whilst bringing life to mathematics. It was a challenge to teach the practicality or practical application of the concept taught. Let us see this through a different perspective. Let's say I am Neha. Well, nothing to assume here. I am very much Neha. But let's say I'm a grade 10 student, Neha, who does not feel very comfortable with the subject called math. This is a fact that our subject is considered overwhelming and intimidating, so let's accept it. There are days when an average student like me enjoys math classes, and some days are not very joyful. My seniors told me that trigonometry will be tough. But surprisingly, I understood that concept well, but I struggled in a supposedly easier concept like algebra. Maybe because I could not cross-check my answers with my peers while I'm solving my problem. I wasn't comfortable asking everything from the teacher. During online classes, collaborative learning got confined to student-teacher interaction only. Learning from peers was not an option at all. This year has also taught us that peer learning aspect is just as important as the lecture method from the teacher and students being devoid of that are not fully learned students. From a teacher's perspective, it was a boon that trigonometry was understood well, but a bane that concepts like indirect proportion that could be self-realized could not be understood. For instance, I, the student, 
loved to go cycling with my friends. But alas, we were stuck at home. Physical activities stopped for the major part of the year. My teacher said that while cycling, someone who is covering the same distance in lesser time, either he or she is cycling at a greater speed or his cycle has bigger tires. Now, why was there a need to teach this by lecture method? Couldn't this be realized by our students themselves? Let us talk about the role of a teacher here. As they say, new things are learned only when you are exposed to challenges. Not just students, but teachers were also constantly learning. The required qualities of a teacher were the were same, whether in online or in offline setup. What has changed is the perception of these qualities. One of these qualities is having patience. In the physical classroom, patience would be giving students time to grasp the content, taught content, finish the writing work, and ask questions. In the online classes, what I as a teacher experienced was all these aspects of patience were definitely a requirement in addition to showing patience in waiting for an answer. A student who has been asked a question by the teacher should have been given time to think, Good calculate. Uh, all uh, teachers I'm, are informed that I'm sorry. Uh, the mask is outside. Um, buy, am I audible? Shweta ma'am? Yes, you are very uh, nice. Uh, yeah, I okay. think there is some announcement going on in the background. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's over now. Thank you. A student who has been asked a question by the teacher should have been given time to think, to calculate, and properly word out his answer. It has been seen in order to save time and not let the other students get distracted. Sometimes the teacher tends to not wait for the answer and carry on with the class. If I am a student who is taking my own time to reach the answer, which might be a few seconds more than the other, I think I deserve that kind of my time. Mathematics is a subject that has been perceived like not everybody's cup of tea. Communication, body language, and mathematical language play a vital role in developing the necessary connect with students. The issue of attendance will also be solved if the teacher has been able to build a bond or the required relationship with his or her students. I have been working in an inclusive school for the past nine years, teaching children with special needs was the greatest challenge that we faced. We faced issues like lack of availability of a prompter or scribe to help students in writing answers, lack of one-to-one -one attention to the child to help them cope with the burden of too many sums, overexposure to unnecessary YouTube material, which acts as a distractor. These students, I believe, have suffered more than the others. They have suffered with problems like lack of self-esteem, lack of self-confidence, increase in learning gaps, and also lack of student-teacher relationship. This relationship acts as a catalyst to children with special needs to train their brain and body to function towards academics. A teacher, also needs to be updated all the time. Updated with what? Updated with the latest development in her subject and expose her to students to the same. Updated with the latest technology and be quite pro in using it as well. We have been learning much of the technological development from students only, by the way. They know thousand times more than us. And also what I've realized is while they teach technology to us, they show more patience as compared to what we would have shown in teaching them. 
a teacher should also be updated with the well-being of his or her students. This will make the child feel like home away from home while he is interacting with you. Well, after discussing about a year full of challenges, I would now like to throw some light on how we have been trying to be successful in facing these challenges. Our institution has introduced a new subject during the pandemic called Life is Math. This is discussed in grade one to grade eight. Not in senior school because again, syllabus completion is an ongoing issue. The idea behind the subject is to bring life experiences and the mathematics concepts behind them to the student's study table. For instance, as you can see, yeah, as you can see, patterns in a calendar have been brought to the notice of kids. And that also helps them to understand concepts like arithmetic progression in later years. When we celebrate Onam in school, children would create beautiful pukalam. Now, what is a pukalam? Pukalam is a rangoli design made of flowers. These kids, because they were stuck at home, lack of availability of space and flowers, of course. These kids were asked to make 3D shapes, many of same and different sizes, and create a pukalam design from these. The creativity of the kids, as we can see, is a delight to watch. Many other household or kitchen activities were also conducted in the subject and has been, it's an ongoing thing, it's still going on. And believe me, we have been largely successful in wave, waving off the fear of the subject among children. For visually impaired students, screen readers have been used. For students who take extra time than the others, a recording of the class is sent to them for their convenience. Some other aspects where we all, not just us, we all as teacher fraternity has been successful in our teaching larger number of students together, getting immediate feedback of objective assessment and a chance to reassess as well. And finally, our professional growth as a teacher. I would like to end my discussion by quoting what mathematician Alan Turing once said. A computer would deserve to be called intelligent if it could deceive a human into believing that it was human. That day hasn't come yet. Thank you. Thank you so much, Neha. And perfectly finished in 11 minutes. Thank you. Uh, very exciting uh, to hear the uh, things that you started after in offline mode, the life in maths. Yeah, and it has... I, I have lots of questions around it, but I think I'll ask it uh, when everyone sure. asks. Yeah. Uh, so uh, let's, unless someone has to like really clarify question, we'll move on to our next panelist, uh, Gauti, uh, Gauri Thagaraju. Uh, yeah. So uh, Gauri Thagarajan is a senior school teacher in Chennai, uh, and she will be uh, describing a narrative on teaching mathematics to students from resourceful families. She has been teaching almost for uh, two and a half decades and uh, in CBSC schools. And right now she's a head of mathematics uh, department in Bal Vidya Mandir Senior Secondary School uh, in Chennai. Uh, she completed her mathematics masters in the Ramanujan Institute uh, in Madras. Uh, and also, uh, yeah, a master's uh, in education in University of Madras. Uh, she has something of an idea called house textbooks for primary math uh, teachers and also developed some on physics uh, in her earlier experiences. So we would like to know all about that. Uh, uh, Gauri, welcome to you. Uh, yeah. And you have uh, 12 minutes. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Shweta. Um, and uh, all the respected panelists. A very good morning to everybody who has joined this meeting. And thank you, Shweta, for your kind words. And uh, yeah, regarding uh, 
online teaching i think i should start right away where the pandemic all the pandemic started uh, in 2020 all of a sudden uh, on one fine day when one exam got over for class 10 and we were all told not to come to school from the next day it was just a huge shock on everybody we were not able to understand what is going to happen uh, immediately because some exams because i'm teaching her classes uh, it was really a, a a question mark in front of us was a question mark in front of us uh, what will happen to the remaining exams and all that was the immediate response and uh, uh, the concern we had and um, i think the cbse took care of all those things but um, regarding the classes fortunately we were uh, uh, we finished our classes and we finished our exams for the remaining classes so we were uh, comfortably able to close the school on that but still we thought everything will be okay by june and uh, it didn't happen and uh, uh, we initially started i can say uh, with uh, we had Uh, sent videos to students we recorded videos uh, at home and we sent the lessons of the videos to students and uh, through a app i think it is an app which is a german based app which is called panacto uh, that was that's how we started the teaching process especially for 10 and 12 grades because we thought we shouldn't delay much so april classes were uh, conducted in that way and uh, maybe had a break in fact uh, and then suddenly we had to continue with classes online classes and it all uh, was really not uh, good at that time so we moved on to microsoft teams so teachers really had a challenge in front of them to suddenly handle this microsoft teams and we were given a month long training in different uh, uh, phases by the teams uh, uh, person themselves and also after that some of our teachers a team of our teachers who are well versed of course tech people uh, they trained us uh, almost to it took quite a bit of time for us to understand because there were so many other factors which i think the teachers had to really learn to uh, you know conduct the classes smooth Uh, apart from handling the children there were technical issues and technical challenges uh, because uh, we were asked to record the the classes and it had to be sent to the parents in case the students have net issues they had to they should be able to uh, i mean access the video recordings so that they will have the continuity of the learning uh, will happen and uh, so that was also something which we and the attendance uh, also was checked and we had a method in which the attendance were marked and that was also made available in the teams itself and uh, so i think it took around a month or uh, one and a half months for us to at least understand and uh, settle down in all these uh, conducting the classes so that is what that was a major issue in even start conducting the classes and then comes the um, as uh, neha ma'am rightly said the relationship between teachers and students but uh, luckily i would say i can divide the student teacher relationship in three uh, different uh, categories maybe the primary teachers the middle school teachers and the high school teachers maybe from 9 to 12 we can say we have we are more uh, uh, syllabus oriented and uh, suddenly the government came up with uh, the limitation of timing we cannot go more than uh, four hours per day the screen time for the children and uh, we had that limitation and a challenge in front of us so we uh, and uh, we also had the the syllabus to be covered in higher classes and i think that was given a little bit liberty in the lower classes we were able to tailor it according to what is uh, required for them or uh, whatever is required for their subsequent class we planned in such a way that we are not missing out on those things from classes 1 to 8 but 9 to 12 we had no choice uh, but later we had some uh, rationalization of the syllabus 
but it was not of uh, maybe in mathematics i felt it was not of uh, much use because we know math we have relation i mean link between every chapter and so then if your uh, deleted portion has a connection in the next chapter you cannot delete it while teaching so we really had a big challenge for class ahead classes uh, but somehow we were able to uh, manage it uh, and uh, we were able to uh, do a lot of um, outside class work uh, in the form of uh, giving them more assignments uh giving them uh, solutions whenever they need an off uh, class i mean off screen we had to uh, we had a lot of interaction with the students and uh, so that way we were able to manage last year's uh, syllabus completion and uh, lower classes they were really uh, enjoying the online classes i must say because high uh, level of interaction was happening and the teachers also whatever was available at their home they were able to do it in activity based teaching the teachers really raised up to the occasion and uh, as a math head of the department i was just monitoring uh, from class 1 to class 12 though i teach class 12 Uh, i had to i was just in um, i mean touch with every teacher who was teaching from class 1 to uh, class 11 uh, so i was able to see that enthusiasm after one month they had some hiccups definitely they had uh, were cribbing about not meeting their children and uh, the uh, primary teachers especially love to be with their children and they were really missing all those fun but later on uh, they saw to that that every child is being because we, our school we had section wise uh, classes uh, so we had a small group to interact at a given point of time and uh, so teachers uh, really picked up fast and i will uh, they were able to um, uh, like you no know, do the activities from the resources available in the school and meanwhile they also explored a lot of technical uh, Uh, what to say like uh, things available and they had time to do that they had mind to do that more than time and uh, they all started using those uh, ai uh, related activities uh, ai enabled activities and apps so uh, the teachers were uh, getting immediate feedback like you no know, doing some fun activities and the major challenge was to keep them engaged in the class and when they had a lot of scope for uh, distraction and uh, i'm talking about classes 1 to 8 now so uh, we were able to give some activities then and there we can post the link and uh, they were able to really pick it up and uh, do that activity after the lesson is over and uh, no slowly I, but it all happened after four or five months of no normal online teaching with all the uh, challenges faced and hiccups that i had and all the demands from the parents that the ch children are not able to sit in a place or uh, the children are not listening the parents involvement was uh, no in a great demand and parents Uh, we're not used to sit with their children so long and uh, so all these things happened and after four or five months i think in september 20 20 i think we had a lot of activities in our hand lot of uh, alternatives in our hand and we all started doing it and the children started really enjoying uh, and uh, we had we could see a big difference in their uh, way of learning and uh, uh, also attendance uh, we were seeing the improvement and they wanted to come to class and they were able to interact well in the class so coming to higher classes i think uh, we had still had the challenges because we didn't have time to uh, uh, really uh, do the activities and we were doing it off the screen maybe off after the class we were sending them but still we felt that we need uh, that the body language what we can see when we are in front of them that was missed to a great extent because we know this child has not understood from the way he reacts and we were able we will be able to repeat the concept again but that was not possible and higher classes for some reason or other they felt very shy to open their mic and speak even if they had a doubt and it was it called for a great effort from their side to uh, pick up the phone and call even they had a 
uh, choice. We were all telling that you can call anytime, you can be with, uh, I mean, um, you can contact us anytime. But I think that also was not a big uh, uh, convenience for them. So, uh, like average students, like Neha Ma'am said, average students or below average students were the ones who were really affected because the ones who were self-motivated, I think they will anyway do it uh, online or offline. They will do their work and they will do that. They will uh, uh, finish their work and their, uh, the study, the learning will go on in the pace in what they wanted. They really found it really easy for uh, them in online classes because it is self-paced. Um, so the average ones really missed out on it. And having the schools reopened now, this is what I wanted to say because for the past, uh, from September 1st, we are in the physical school. And uh, what to my great surprise, I can see the attendance was full. One or two who didn't come for some valid reason. And um, in spite of still the risk is uh, there, this factor is there but still they want to be with their peers. The peer motivation is what they were missing when I just called out for some inputs from them. Uh, they were telling the, we just want the teacher in front of us, whatever it is. So it was so heartwarming when they told that. Uh, so we thought, oh, no, we should, whatever it is, we should be with our children. And uh, it was really good to see them back in school. And um, yeah, that's the, about board exams. That's what I wanted to share here. The children were really missing the board exams. They were telling we have lost one experience, which and the thrill what we normally have when we face a board exam. It was a, really a surprise for me. I thought many of them will be very happy that they didn't have to write the exam, but maybe some, uh, I should say 90% said uh, at least uh, should be honestly, they would have said this. And uh, they said that uh, they wanted to write board exam and to uh, know where they really stand for all the hard work they had put in last year. So that was the feedback I got from the students. And um, I think that's it from my side to share. And um, to just end with, I can just give you one quote what I recently read and it was really uh, you know, good to know. Technology will never replace a good teacher, but technology in the hands of a good teacher can be transformational. So uh, with that, I will uh, end my talk. Thank you. Thank you, Sneha Shweta. Thank you so much, Gauri. Uh, yes, and uh, very uh, like a encouraging, provocative uh, uh, description. And there are questions that have started coming. I urge all the teachers to write questions. And if you also want to share experience, you can also write that uh, in brief. Uh, yeah, that was a very powerful quote, uh, Gauri ma'am. You. Uh, yeah, you have got a comment there. So uh, uh, I also have questions around what you said about the rationalization of curriculum and the loss of learning, but I think we'll get back to it uh, with sure. everyone. Uh, so now our next panelist is uh, Chanchal Yadav. Uh, Chanchal, would you be able to switch on your video? Yeah. Uh, hello, Shweta, that will be a problem because I have some network issues here. Understood. Okay. Okay. So, uh, okay, let me uh, just say a few words about uh, Chanchal. Uh, she's a primary school teacher uh, in Delhi and she's going to talk about uh, her experience of reaching out to students who largely came from underprivileged backgrounds. Uh, she had done her PhD in math education uh, in specially area of assessment in early mathematics classrooms, a socio-cultural perspective. Uh, and she's been working since as a teacher since 2015. So very excited, Chanchal, over to you. Uh, and you have uh, 12 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you, Shweta. Today, today, I will be talking about experiences of teachers as well as of students during the time of pandemic. So this is not very specific to mathematics per se, but this is about our journey as teachers and how we kind of dealt with it. And also, uh, I will also talk about some experiences of students from another school, which is a kind of privileged school. Fine. So yeah. during this time of pandemic, this online teaching was introduced and it has its own strength and weaknesses. So it's worth appreciating that education system did kind of take in cognizance of it quite timely and efforts were made to make 
this scenario as much normal as possible. Though it was surely not a normal scenario, but yes, efforts were made from teachers and by the teachers and from the department as well to make this, this teaching learning process as smooth as possible. But just because we, we, we cater to the students who belong to underprivileged backgrounds, we have our own issues. So I'm giving you this brief glimpse of the school. This, uh, this is a government school, which is located in Delhi suburb, which is very near to a cyber city. The uh, parents of our, our students are basically grade four wage earners. So they are basically guards or they, they kind of uh, sell some things. And they are basically migrant population, migrant from UP, Bihar, MP basically. So they have this fixed salary of 10 to 12,000 per month. They live in this one room set of eight by eight square feet and this room is shared by around four to six people. So literally speaking, when you are supposed to be at your home, that means four people have to sit in a room. They, there is no space to move even. In such a scenario, expecting parents to buy smartphones for their kids was not feasible for us. So how we started that we actually started calling parents just to ask them if they are okay, if the kids are fine, what are they doing, how are they spending their time. And the story was kind of heart-wrenching that people, people were really struggling to make, meet their ends meet. So at that time, we kind of suggested students that, okay, if you have old newspaper, can do Sudoku. If you, have, if you have some numbers in front of you, just play number game. This number game is very popular. That you make, uh, you uh, pick a set of any four numbers and try to make it zero. So we kind of st started with that. For me as a teacher personally, it was not very significant that how much of content students have learned in this period of time, just because they have all the time period to learn, but surviving this stage with some hope, with some positivity, the, with some schedule was very significant. So uh, in such a scenario, we kind of started with, we kind of encouraged parents if they could download WhatsApp. Even with that, we have challenges like there was no data pack. They have no money to recharge the phone timely. So expecting them to take live classes was not possible for us. So we suggested that, okay, we will send you some work via worksheets. You solve those problems and send this back to us. So many students started with that, that we will send them one solved problem, photo of a one solved problem with some voice message. They will read the problem. They will listen to this voice messages. And then they attempt to solve this problem using those uh, cues that we have given. And then they solve their own practice set of questions, then they will send it back to us. We will just check it and send it back to them. So that's how we started. Gradually, uh, when uh, there was some, some relaxation and parents started going to work, there was, there was they, they seemed to be have some possibility of having online classes. And initially out of 75 students, only 10 to 12 students joined. So we started with then online classes. Even with that, uh, it's, it's, it's worth mentioning that even teachers had to struggle with this technology thing because all the teachers are not quite, app, uh, quite handy with the technology. So teachers as a self-help group, they kind of helped each other to learn how to deal with this technology. So there's one specific teacher who don't know how to generate Zoom meeting links. So there's another teacher who created link for him, send it to him. He will then forward it to his students and then collectively they will take the class. So something, this is also a learning for teachers. Uh, uh, even with that, taking regular classes was not possible because one student will show up in one class and then he will not be able to, to be there in another two, three classes just because there is no data pack again. If this phone is shared by two, three siblings, then the elder sibling will take the phone. And by the time his turn will come, his or her turn will come, there is no, no data left. So in, in with these kind of challenges, we really relied on sending worksheets only. It was then un, unreasonable for us to expect that how much of algebra you have learned, how much of trigonometry have you learned, because that was not possible for us. Uh, if you look, uh, there is this, this kind of socioeconomic background has its own challenges. But I happen... Uh, just because we happened to talk to a lot of students during this time, it was interesting that uh, students have, you will get to know some, some qualities about those students which you are not aware. Like you find that students who are very much persistent. Uh, uh, in the classroom, they have access to teachers. In the classroom, they have access to their peers. But 
at home when they are trying to solve worksheet on their own using those wise messages they have to be really persistent in doing that so they will just solve a problem they will get stuck there they will send a photo again and ask you uh, step 4 ke baad to we are not doing uh, we are not able to do it then teacher has to just kind of respond again ki this is how you have to solve it then they will try to solve it again so this kind of persistence is worth appreciating second uh, they get just because we were sending links and we were telling them okay these are these are feasible uh, uh, videos or these are these are kind of uh, application that you may access if you have data so they tried they kind of explored a lot of resources they, that they were not aware of so uh, a class 9 student kind of come up and said ki maine geo zebra pehli baar dekha hai and i find it really interesting uh abhi we also kind of mention few names they say up up uh, there's there's one application name named flipgrid you can make your videos and upload it there so few of us can do that and other student were very excited that one of our our peer has done it and they kind of opened the open this application and explored ki ye kya hai there is also this uh, mental me, mentimeter quiz so this is we used to just kind of mention few applications because we were not expecting student to download it right away and do it we were just tell, helping all those students in whichever way it was possible so uh, during this time there was you will also find we also noticed self motivation in students that they really wanted to do it if we send them five question they will keep doing it till the time they they kind of solve it so this motivation was really inspiring for us as teachers they also get time to discover themselves so one of our class 8 student named piyush he explored that that he has very good uh, fine art skill so he started sketching and he sent a few of his sketches to the school and they are really worth appreciating we recommended this child to uh, to find find some help and the school is ready to help him with all the monetary support so that he can really polish his skills there is this another another girl from our school uh who has who said that i ha- i just learned ki mera to music mein bahut interest hai and i just want to pursue it so even in these challenging times students not only continued with their learning maintaining some schedule and some rhythm in their work they also explored themselves as learners they also get to know more about their parents their siblings and they actually become more compassionate just one class 8 girl and uh, she's uh, she has a single mother so she said ki meri maa bahut pareshan hoti hai kyunki aajkal kaam nahi hai to main apni mummy ko kehti hu hum dono theek to rehte hain aapko pareshan hone ki zarurat nahi jaldi school khul jayenge so this compassion if expecting this from class 8 learner and being able to console her mother like this i mean we i as a teacher and we as a school really appreciate that we are, that our student are surviving this quite wonderfully and as far as this learning mathematics per se is concerned we as teach i as teacher personally is not very much concerned about it right now because we have all the time to do it thank you thank you so much chanchal it's unfortunate that uh, we couldn't see you <laughs> yeah and a very thrilling journey that you described uh, where you started with no sort of a contact just calling students and speaking with them from there to uh, being able to use geogebra uh, make their videos uh, and also the whole narration of how uh, talking to students more uh, have given you some sort of a other picture of uh, what student think and do so it's very interesting Uh, there are some questions again uh, for you and we'll take it uh, later uh, is that okay i don't see any uh, emergent yeah yeah so thank you chanchal yeah thank you so much we'll move on to uh, umar now uh, umar you want to share your screen and presentation uh, i will uh, introduce you in meanwhile okay uh, so uh, mohammad umar he is from azim premji foundation and uh, today he will talk about uh, strengthening teachers agency in reaching out to children uh, who are living in far flung villages and how they manage to even accelerate the even vaccination drive uh, in the villages that is what he is going to talk about uh, he has done uh, his degree in mathematics a bachelor's degree and a masters in sociology from uh, csjm uh, university in kanpur 
uh, he has also uh, studied journalism and theater <laughs> Uh, and uh, philosophy of education and pedagogy of mathematics from TIS Mumbai, Tata Institute of Social Sciences. Uh, he began his career as a teacher. Uh, then he was working as a researcher in Eklavya. I think people might know Eklavya is an institute in educational research and innovation at Hoshankaba, uh, Madhya Pradesh. Uh, then he also worked as a curriculum specialist in SIERT in Udaipur. Uh, and right now he is uh, working at Azim Premji uh, Foundation as a resource person. Uh, with maths teachers. So, uh, and uh, my and uh, Umar's association also goes long back. Uh, we, when I started working on fractions, ratios, proportion, Umar was also part of it. So, welcome, Umar, and over to you. Uh, you thank have... you. Thank you very much, uh, Shweta. Thank you. Yeah. 15 uh, minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So, Jo Baki Tare Piche Sare teachers. जिस बता रहे हैं मेरे जो चैलेंजेस हैं उनसे थोड़े से ज्यादा हैं इनफैक्ट काफी ज्यादा हैं एक्चुअली हम लोग जहां पे काम करते हैं दिस दिस बेल्ट इज यू नो वेरी चैलेंजिंग बेल्ट आई एम बेस्ड इन राजसमंद इट इज 75 किलोमीटर इन नॉर्थ डायरेक्शन फ्रॉम उदयपुर बहुत सारे बच्चे फर्स्ट जनरेशन लर्नर्स हैं और uh, फोन जैसा नेटवर्क फोन की चैलेंजेस सबने बताए वैसे हैं तो जो अजीम प्रेमजी फाउंडेशन है उसका उद्देश्य है एक न्याय और बराबरी का समाज की स्थापना जिसमें शिक्षा को हम देखते हैं कि ये मुख्य रूप से शिक्षा ही वो चीज है जिससे हम ये उद्देश्य प्राप्त कर सकते हैं फिलहाल हम लोग छह राज्यों में और एक केंद्र शासित प्रदेश कर रहे हैं आ, मैं जो यहाँ बात रखूंगा वो एक जिले की आ, के एक्सपीरियंसेस है राजसमंद डिस्ट्रिक्ट से आ, तो मैथमेटिक्स टीचिंग में आ, मैंने जब भी काम करना शुरू किया या मेरे अपने एक्सपीरियंसेस थे तो मैं ये बातें सुनता था जॉयफुल लर्निंग लर्निंग डूइंग कनेक्टिंग विद डेली लाइफ एक्सपीरियंसेस इंटीग्रेटिंग maths with other subjects or uh, integrating constitutional values to shuru mein to ye kafi challenging lagta tha lekin dheere dheere jaisa ki shweta ne bataya desh mein bahut saare log in muddon pe kaam kar rahe the unse aur unse seekhte seekhte kuch padhte apne kamon mein hum log koshish karne lage to aapko ye tasveer mein ek origami cap dikh rahi hogi jisko hum paper folding se banate hain ek labe mein this cap is very popular aur hum isse symmetry aur similarity aur angles kai sari cheeze hum log isse karte the aur bhi bahut sari activities hain paper folding ki aur hamare teachers ko ye kis tarah ki activity bahut pasand aati hai teachers training mein jab corona se pehle hum log jab face to face trainings karte the to usme hum log koshish karte the ki cheezon ko haath se banana zarur shamil rakhe aur mathematics ke ideas ko leke banaye aur ye teacher trainings mein hota tha is में बच्चों के साथ भी बच्चों के साथ बाल मेले वगैरह हम सब करते थे मैं आपको दो पहले की बात बता रहा हूं जब ये जो क्रिटिकल टाइम जो कोविड का है ये तब नहीं था और स्कूलों में फील होता था कि हमें हम देखिए हम बेसिकली हम टीचर्स की कैपेसिटी बिल्डिंग के लिए काम करते हैं तो हम टीचर्स के पास जाते थे और टीचर्स के अपने चैलेंज होते थे बहुत सारे लोग कहते थे कि सर हम तो मैथमेटिक्स से है ही नहीं वी आर फ्रॉम सम अदर सब्जेक्ट बट टीचिंग मैथमेटिक्स बिकॉज नो बडी इज हेयर तो हम उनसे पहली चुनौती तो यही होती थी कि उनको खुद कैसे मैथमेटिक्स में कंफर्टेबल बनाया जाए और कुछ कुछ मेटेरियल हम लोग लेके जाते वो क्लास में ट्राई करते थे तो इस सब ऑब्जर्वेशन से बच्चों के साथ काम करके ये पता लगा कि बड़ा चैलेंज है मैथमेटिक्स में काफी सारी चुनौतियां हैं और ये जो रेडीमेड मटेरियल्स हम लेके जाते थे तो टीचर कहते सर हमारे यहाँ मैथ्स लैब नहीं है मटेरियल नहीं है तो आप दे दीजिए 
तो जितना हम हम हमारी तरफ से हमारी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन जो प्रोवाइड कर सकती थी वो हम करते थे आ, लेकिन हमने ये भी देखा कि स्कूल में मटेरियल जो अवेलेबल है उसका भी यूज बहुत सारे लोगों को पता नहीं होता था तो आ, हम हम लोगों ने फिर यही कि करना शुरू किया कि चलो मटेरियल नहीं है तो हाथ से बनाया जाए और जो है उसका इस्तेमाल करना सीखा जाए आ, क्योंकि क्लासरूम में मैथ मैथमेटिक्स को इंटरेस्टिंग बनाना है ताकि जो बच्चे इससे पीछे भाग रहे हैं डर रहे हैं आ, उनको मजा आए और साथ ही टीचर्स को भी मजा आए जो चीज उन्होंने अपने स्कूल डेज में नहीं किया है वो उनको करने का मौका मिले तो ये सारी तस्वीरों में आप देखेंगे आ, कि आ, हम वर्कशॉप में किस तरह से काम करते हैं बाद में मुझे जो मेरी अपनी जो समझ बनी कि मैंने आ, काफी सारा हैंडमेड मटेरियल और आ, कुछ मटेरियल मार्केट का फॉर एग्जांपल ये मोती माला फ्रैक्शन किड तीली के बंडल डाइस डीन्स ब्लॉक और इंच टेप ये सब मैं अपने थैले में रख के चलने लगा जब भी किसी स्कूल जाता तो बच्चों के साथ काम करता और इनडायरेक्टली टीचर्स भी इसको देख के इंस्पायर होते तो धीरे धीरे ये बात समझ में आई कि जो हम मैथ लैब टर्म यूज करते हैं एक्चुअली हमें आ, सरकार सरकारी स्कूलों के साथ ये टर्म यूज ही नहीं करना चाहिए हमें कहना चाहिए कि भाई आसपास की जो चीजें हैं उसको उठाओ और एक एक थैला रखो जिस थैले में ऐसी चीजें हो जो आपके हमारे काम आ सकती हैं और चीजों को बनाते बनाते हम 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 लोगों को ये समझ में आया कि बहुत कम खर्च में बहुत कम पैसों में हम बहुत सारा मटेरियल बना सकते हैं फॉर एग्जाम्पल मैं आपको ये दिखाता हूँ हमारे राजस्थान में लोग अपने जानवरों को डेकोरेट करते हैं गले में गले में ऊंट को बैल को तो ये बहुत इजीली अवेलेबल है और इसको एक रस्सी में डाल के अगर दस दस के ग्रुप्स में हम मोतियों को पिरो दे तो एक बहुत अच्छा सा मोती माला बन जाता है ठीक इसी तरह से डीन्स ब्लॉक बन जाता है जो कि पेपर को ये देखिए टेंस है इसको कट कर लेंगे तो यूनिट्स निकल आएगा और इसके हंड्रेड्स भी काट सकते हैं आ, बहुत सारी चीजें हैं ये आइसक्रीम के स्टिक्स मिलते थे जिनको हम लोग परचेज करके और टेन टेन के ग्रुप्स में इनको बना सकते हैं तो ये जो डीन्स ब्लॉक मार्केट में एक्चुअली राजस्थान में कहीं ये अवेलेबल भी नहीं है कोई खरीदना भी चाहे तो दिल्ली भोपाल जाना पड़ेगा तो ये इनके कुछ अल्टरनेट बनाए गए ये इंच टेप रखा गया और उनके साथ काम शुरू किया गया बाद में तो हम लोगों ने काफी सारा बल्क में ऐसा बीट्स खरीद के अब सारे टीचर्स को हम बनवा के दे देते थे बहुत बहुत सस्ता पड़ता था टीचर्स इसको यूज करते थे और हमने ये देखा कि जब टीचर अपने मटेरियल्स को खुद बना के ले गए होते थे तो उनका दिल से उसके साथ जुड़ाव होता था मन मन से वो उसको यूज करते थे उसके फोटोग्राफ भेजते थे और उसके आ, अपनी आ, मतलब अपनी थॉट भी उसमें जोड़ते थे फॉर एग्जांपल अगर आप इसमें नीचे देखेंगे तो एक एक टीचर है पाली जिले में उनका नाम श्रवण है उनको किसी वर्कशॉप में उन्होंने ये मोती माला देखी और उनको बहुत पसंद आई वो बनाना चाहते थे और उनके जिले में आ, मतलब ठीक ठाक साइज के बीड्स नहीं मिले तो उन्होंने बच्चों से बोतल के ढक्कन मंगा लिए ये जो लोग पानी पी के फेंक देते हैं बहुत सारे टूरिस्ट वहां आते हैं घूमने तो दस लाल दस हरे दस लाल ऐसे करके बोतल के ढक्कन डाल के उन्होंने मोती माला बना ली और उसका उपयोग उन्होंने करना अपने क्लासरूम में शुरू कर दिया और बाद की एक वर्कशॉप में वो इस माला को लेके आए और उन्होंने बताया कि वो कैसे इससे एडिशन सब्ट्रैक्शन मल्टीप्लिकेशन और मेंटल मैथमेटिक्स के कई सारे क्वेश्चन को डील करते हैं ये सारी जो बातें मैं आपको कह रहा हूँ ये देखिए ये सब संभव था कोविड से पहले आ, आ, और टीचर्स के कुछ चैलेंजेस देखिए तब निकलते थे वर्कशॉप में जब वो थोड़े कंफर्टेबल होते हैं मैथ से तो हम हम लोग उनके सामने कुछ स्टोरी रखते थे कि भाई पिक्चर स्टोरी है आप इसको सीक्वेंस में जमा दीजिए ये तो कहानी है जो आप तो लैंग्वेज में भी वो ये सब करते थे तो इसमें जो थॉट प्रोसेस लगती है जो 
जिस तरह से सोचते थे अलग अलग कहानियां बन के आती थी फिर हम हम लोग उनको बताते कि भाई ये जो आपने किया ये एक तरह का सिक्वेंशियल थिंकिंग है जो आप गणित में भी आप एक एक तरह का गणितीय कौशल भी है जो आप आम जिंदगी में भी इस्तेमाल करते हैं तो लोगों को लगता था अच्छा मैथमेटिक्स मतलब ऑपरेशंस और नंबर्स के साथ डील करने के अलावा भी मैथमेटिक्स हो सकता है और वो इतना इजी और इंटरेस्टिंग है इसी तरह से इस तरह का ये खुशी खुशी का एक वर्कशीट है जिसमें जो बच्चों को पेंसिल से मिलाना है कौन सी चीज ठेले पे जाएगी कौन सी स्कूल में कौन सी खेत में और इसको टीचर्स करते थे और कई बार ऐसे सवाल आते थे कि जब ये वर्कशीट बच्चों के पास जाती थी तो बच्चे तो जब हम टीचर्स को देते तो टीचर हर चीज को कहीं एक जगह मिलाते थे ये जो होता है ना मैथमेटिक्स में प्रिसीजन एक ही ए हर सवाल का एक सही उत्तर है और एक ही सही उत्तर है ये जो धारणा बन जाती है इसको तोड़ना पड़ता है तो यहाँ पे बच्चों ने फावड़े को खेत में भी मिला दिया और स्कूल में भी मिला दिया उनसे बात की गई तो बच्चों ने कहा भाई फावड़ा तो हमारे स्कूल में भी है खेत में भी है तो कुछ इस तरह की बात उभरती है जो हम मैथमेटिक्स में हम देखते हैं इंटर सेट के इंटरसेक्शन में हम देखते हैं कि कोई एलिमेंट दोनों सेट का हिस्सा हो सकता है जब हम ऊपर पढ़ते हैं और उनसे हमने बात की कि भाई ये एक तरह का क्लासिफिकेशन है एक तरह का आप वर्गीकरण कर रहे हैं और वर्गीकरण में कोई भी वस्तु एक या दो वर्गों में जा सकती है एक या दो कैटेगरीज में आप उसको बांट सकते हैं एक एक और बात मैं हमेशा सोचता था कि वैल्यू कैसे ऐड करें मैथ्स एजुकेशन में वैल्यू को कैसे जा, लाया जाए तो ये पहली क्लास का पिक्चर है जो जो बड़ा लिमिटेड सेंस में हम पिक्चर्स को यूज करते हैं आ, कि कौन पहले आएगा कौन बाद में लेकिन इस एक चित्र से बहुत सारी बातें हुई पानी की इतनी लंबी लाइन क्यों है क्या तुम अपने गांव में हर नल पे पानी भर सकते हो जाति की समस्या है गांव में या नहीं है और बच्चों के बीच जब हम लोग एक बड़ा अच्छा डिबेट हुआ जब टीचर से इस सवाल को इस वर्कशीट पे बात की गई कि ये जो लड़का खड़ा है ये कौन है तो कई टीचर्स ने कहा माँ के साथ आया है तो माँ कौन है तो आधे लोगों ने कहा आगे वाली है पीछे वाली है और इसके पीछे उनका अपना लॉजिक था आ, किसी ने कहा पीछे वाली माँ है क्योंकि उसने उस पर हाथ रखा हुआ है किसी ने कहा है आगे वाली माँ है पानी भरेगी तो ये बच्चा मदद करेगा घड़ा उठाने में तो ऐसे ऐसे डिफरेंट टाइप के लॉजिक आए लॉजिकल थिंकिंग की जो हम लोग मैथमेटिक्स में बात करते हैं और एक स्कूल में भी ऐसा हुआ कि काफी सारे बच्चों ने कहा कि सर वो पीछे वाली उसकी माँ है क्योंकि देखो उसने बच्चे के कंधे पे हाथ रखा हुआ है और वो वही उसकी माँ है तो थोड़ी देर बाद एक बच्चे ने अपना आंसर बदल दिया उसने कहा नहीं नहीं सर उसकी माँ आगे वाली है तो हमने पूछा आ, तुम ऐसा क्यों कह रहे हो तो उसने कहा अरे सर उसका मुंह तो देखो तो आप अगर गौर से देखेंगे ये जो बच्चे का फेस देखेंगे और आगे माँ आगे जो माँ है उसका फेस देखेंगे तो काफी मिल रहा है तो बच्चों का ऑब्जर्वेशन कितना गहरा होता है हम आगे चल के उनको सिमिलर ट्राइंगल सिमिलर शेप्स के बारे में पढ़ाते हैं और मैचिंग करना बताते हैं मैथमेटिक्स में लेकिन यहाँ जो इतने सारे स्कोप खुलते हैं उसको हम यूज नहीं करते अगर हम ओरल बच्चों से बातचीत करें तो मैथमेटिक्स के कई सारे कॉन्सेप्ट बहुत इजिली हम डील कर सकते हैं और बहुत नीचे की क्लासेस से डील कर सकते हैं एक और बात आई कि बच्चों से पूछा गया कि अच्छा तुम होते इस ये लड़के की जगह तो क्या करते बहुत सारे बच्चों ने कहा कि मैं अपनी माँ का घड़ा उठा देता मैं नल चला देता मैं पानी भरने में मदद करता या मेरी बारी आती तो मैं पानी भर के चला था लाइन में खड़ा रहता सब एक एक बच्चे ने कहा कि सर जी हम अपना पानी भरते तो हम पीछे जो बूढ़े दादा पीछे खड़े हैं उनको कम दिखाई देता है हम उनका पानी भी अपने साथ में भर देते देखिए कितनी अच्छी बात है कि इस बच्चे ने पिक्चर में वो पीछे खड़े व्यक्ति को बुजुर्ग माना और ये माना कि उनके चश्मा है वो देख भी कम पा रहे हैं थोड़ा झुके हुए हैं तो मैं अपना पानी भरूंगा तो उनको भी भर दूंगा 
यहां देख यहां हमारे सामने एज ए टीचर एक इसको खुलता है कि हम मैथमेटिक्स के डिस्कोर्स के साथ वैल्यूज की बात भी इतने ब्यूटीफुली कनेक्ट कर सकते हैं अगर हम सच में अपने आंख कान खुले रखें और जो एक्टिविटी कर रहे हैं उसको हम थोड़ा लार्जर पर्सपेक्टिव में हम देखने की कोशिश करें तो ये सब काम करते करते मैंने लोगों से सीखा लेकिन हम टीचर से जब बात करते थे तो टीचर्स हमें प्रॉब्लम तो वही बताते थे कि सर हमारे बच्चे गिनती नहीं लिख पा रहे हैं गिनती गलत लिखते हैं जोड़ घटाना गुणा भाग यही सब भाग भाग का नाम तो बहुत कम लोग लेते हैं क्योंकि प्राइमरी क्लासेस में डिवीजन तक बहुत कम लोग पहुंच पाते हैं फ्रैक्शन का तो कोई नाम ही नहीं लेता है क्योंकि शायद फ्रैक्शन पे पहुंचते होंगे कि नहीं तो जोड़ घटाना गुणा बस इसमें ही चलता है काम और इससे ऊपर की बात करो तो टीचर्स के अपने बहुत सारे चैलेंजेस हैं तो हम उनके सामने ये जो मोती माला है और डीन्स ब्लॉक है तीली बंडल है इन सबको लेके हम लोग फाइव काउंटिंग प्रिंसिपल्स की भाई आप बच्चों को नंबर लिखवाइए मत सिर्फ लिखवाइए मत बल्कि उससे पहले गिनने पे काम करिए क्वांटिटी सेंस आ, और नंबर रिकग्निशन इन सब पे काम करिए और फिर लिखने पे जाइए लिखने की जल्दबाजी करनी नहीं चाहिए क्योंकि हम गिनने पे काम ही नहीं करते और जल्दी से लिखने पे चले जाते ये सारा कुछ हमारी वर्कशॉप्स में आ, आ, होता है कुछ रीडिंग्स हम लोग यूज करते हैं उमर आपके पास एक मिनट है सॉरी और एक मिनट जी जी हाँ ओके तो ये सारी चीजें हम याद कर यूज करते कुछ हम लोग इनको पढ़ने को देते हैं रीडिंग मेटेरियल अच्छा अब मैं थोड़ा सा आगे बढ़ता हूँ ये जब पैंडमिक आया तो हम लोग तो यही किए सबसे पहले हम हमारे टीचर्स फील्ड पे थे तो उनको हमने सेफ्टी किट्स दिए मास्क सैनिटाइजर थे नहीं आ, हमारे जो स्कूलों के बच्चे हैं उन, उन प्यार खाना नहीं था स्कूल में भी मिड डे मील नहीं बन रहा था स्कूल बंद थे तो जहाँ हम राशन पहुंचा सकते थे जिन जिन गाँव में और इसमें हमारे टीचर्स ने बहुत मदद की उन्होंने हमें नीडी फैमिलीज की लिस्ट दी तो आशा वर्कर आंगनवाड़ी और टीचर्स जो क्वारंटीन सेंटर्स पे थे उन सबको हमने सेफ्टी हमारी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ने तकरीबन साढ़े चार हजार टीचर्स और फ्रंटलाइन वर्कर्स को सेफ्टी किट दिया करीब नौ हजार फैमिलीज को राशन दिया ये सब चलता रहा आ, लेकिन अब काम भी तो करना है हम सब शिक्षा के लोग हैं और एजुकेशन डिपार्टमेंट अचानक से ऑनलाइन आ गया टीचर्स कंफर्टेबल नहीं थे तो जा जा के उनको टीम ऐप डाउनलोड करना सिखाया गया उनके स्कूलों में जाके मास्क लगा के दूर दूर बैठ के सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग से और फिर कुछ वेबिनार्स हम लोगों ने भी की जिसमें हमने उनके एक्सपीरियंसेस सुने टीचर्स के एक्सपीरियंसेस टीचर्स के चैलेंजेस और उन्होंने जो इनोवेशन कर रखे हैं या अपने स्कूल को बेहतर कर रहे हैं ये सारे एक्सपीरियंसेस आते रहे कोविड को लेके भी बात हुई कि इससे क्या सावधानियां करी जाए और आ, हमारे साथियों ने कुछ इस तरह के चार्ट्स बनाए जिसको आप देखेंगे कि कोविड से अगर कोई व्यक्ति संक्रमित है तो वो किस रेट से अपने गांव में संक्रमण फैला सकता है और क्यों टीका लगाना जरूरी है आ, और इस सारे ऑनलाइन प्रोग्राम्स में ऐसी चीजें ली जो पिक्चर्स थी पिक्चर्स को देख के टीचर्स को आंसर लिखना था चैट बॉक्स में लिखना था और उस पर डिस्कशन होता एक दो घंटे का बातचीत हम लोग कर पाते थे और ये काफी चला मतलब लेवल पे स्टेट लेवल पे लेकिन ये बच्चों तक नहीं पहुंच रहा था टीचर्स तो जुड़ रहे थे बच्चे तो घरों पे उन, उन तक कुछ नहीं पहुंच रहा था तो कुछ टीचर्स कम्युनिटी में जाके पढ़ाना शुरू कर चुके थे बच्चों को हम लोगों ने थैला पुस्तकालय दे दिया अपने टीचर्स को हम खुद भी जाते थे आ, कुछ वर्कशीट्स हम लोगों ने जल्दी जल्दी में डेवलप करी काफी ऐसी वर्कशीट जो जो उनके पिछले क्लास के कॉन्सेप्ट से जुड़ती हो और नए कॉन्सेप्ट पे एक तरह का ट्रांजिशन बनता हो जिसको बच्चे जो पढ़ सकते हैं या पिक्चर्स देख के सॉल्व कर सके और बच्चों ने उसको सॉल्व किया बच्चों ने जवाब दिया वो वर्कशीट को टीचर्स तीसरे दिन चौथे दिन कलेक्ट करके लाते थे एक लेवल का बच्चे घर पे कुछ काम कर पाते थे और अगर आप आप इस तस्वीर को देखें तो एक बच्चे ने 
बस ये कॉन्टेक्स्ट की भाई बंदर ने बिल्ली को आधी आधी रोटी बांटी है तो ये तो आधी आधी हो गई अगर एक रोटी को पांच बिल्लियों में उमर आपका तो समय खत्म हो गया है तो आप जल्दी से एक मिनट तो ये अगर आप देखें तो उसका स्ट्रगल आप देख सकते हैं कि एक बच्चा कैसे एक रोटी को पांच बराबर टुकड़ों में बांटने की पूरी जर्नी तय कर रहा है और ये वर्कशीट देख के हम लोगों को लगता है कि चिल्ड्रंस आर ट्राइंग टू डू समथिंग कुछ कुछ वो करने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं आ, फिर हमारे टीचर्स जो हैं लोगों को वैक्सीन को लेके जागरूक करने में जा रहे थे हेल्थ डिपार्टमेंट जा रहा था लेकिन गांव में बहुत सारे लोग वैक्सीन लगवा नहीं रहे थे तो हम सब ने ये मटेरियल्स लिए और हमारे टीचर्स के साथ हम गांव गांव गए लोगों के पास गए समझाने गए और एक कोर ग्रुप बना जिसमें डॉक्टर वहां के पीओ टीचर्स आंगनवाड़ी आशा और नरेगा सेंटर्स नरेगा पॉइंट्स पे जाके क्योंकि हम लोगों को लगा कि देखिए लोग टीका नहीं लगा रहे भ्रम का शिकार है तो ये शिक्षा का सवाल है कहीं ना कहीं हम हम शिक्षा में काम करने वाले लोग हम फेल हुए हैं तो इस पूरी मुहिम में अभी तक हम लोग लगे हैं और अब हम लोग हमारे कुछ साथी और कुछ गाँव के डाटा को कलेक्ट कर रहे हैं डाटा को ऑर्गेनाइज कर रहे हैं ताकि हेल्थ डिपार्टमेंट को ये पता चल सके कि कितने लोगों को आने वाली दस तारीख को सेकेंड डोज लगनी है अभी इस इसका कोई मैकेनिज्म ठीक ठाक है आपको नहीं आपको रुकना होगा क्योस है हेलो तो तो जो तो जो टोपी हमारी आ, हमारी जो लास्ट बात श्वेता तो जो टोपी हमारी ओरिगेनी कैप थी वो टोपी हमारे लिए हमारी मुहिम का हिस्सा बन गई है उसी पे हम लोगों ने वैक्सीनेशन के स्लोगन्स लिखे हैं और वही कैप पहन के हम हमारे वॉलेंटियर्स जा रहे हैं थैंक यू वेरी मच जी थैंक यू उमर बहुत शुक्रिया आपका आपने थोड़ा एक्स्ट्रा टाइम दिया बट दूसरों का तो ठीक है लेकिन अभी चर्चा शुरू करते हैं उसके पहले मैं जस्ट कुछ लोग लेट ज्वाइन हुए मैं जस्ट एक जस्ट समराइज की ये प्लेथोरा ऑफ पैनलिस्ट वॉट दे सेड वॉज फ्रॉम वेरी डिफरेंट बैकग्राउंड ऑल फोर टीचर्स all of them are passionate i think neha spoke about uh, during pandemic how she worked with the child with special needs uh, and again the journey how struggle journey and reaching to uh, what they are doing now like lot of origami even through online mode uh, then uh, uh, gauri explained us uh, her experience from a leadership role at what challenges she has faced with uh, working with teachers and even though the families that they worked with were resourceful uh bringing out this whole idea of peer uh learning in students as well as teachers how she managed that uh the because she worked in secondary the challenge with syllabus uh she raised all those concerns uh then uh, chanchal presented us a very thrilling journey uh, where there was no contact with students like only phone call uh, from there how they have now reached uh working with students on geogebra things and i'm Uh, sure she didn't get time to describe but she must have they must have got lot of help from all the aspects from uh, uh, teachers all together that is why they could do this journey uh, and omar uh, interestingly showed us the pre and post sort of a picture uh, of teaching mathematics what uh, they could do before pandemic uh, and how some of those values and ideas they also maintain when they are working through worksheets pictures stories in the early elementary and elementary schools so wonderful i think uh, the uh, the experiences that all four of you brought in were very very interesting and uh, the question still remains that what big challenge we still have in front of us uh, but uh, let me take some questions from the audience uh, so uh, so there was a, a question about uh, so i will also add my question into that so pramod sagar is asking that there is a great difference between the syllabus of 8th and 9th and how we should deal to transition in smooth way uh, and connected question to that is uh, basically uh, gauri you spoke about the uh, you found the rationalization of the curriculum very problematic and uh, i would like to hear what you think about it like why do you think it's problematic uh, and uh, how do you see uh, how do you like uh, make around it so can you uh, gauri can you answer these two questions in a combined yes uh, yes i can yeah. do that am i audible yes 
Yeah, I, especially when you touch on this eighth and ninth connection, there will be a leap, especially. I think I'm talking uh, pertaining to CBSE syllabus. Can I go ahead with that? I Because I'm not familiar with the other... Yes, uh, yes, I think things. fine. Yes. So CBSE is what I'm talking about. Uh, so uh, eighth and ninth will definitely have a leap in the... Uh, in, I mean, in the outlook itself, even without rationalization or anything, because till eight, everything will be concrete for the children in math. And uh, slowly, the abstraction uh, maybe uh, will slightly start uh, setting in when it comes to class nine. Slowly, the children will start talking about the variables, uh, maybe uh, uh, X, Y, Z, real numbers. All those things will become slightly abstract for them uh, in class nine. As it is, it will take a little bit time for them to uh, uh, I mean settle down in uh, ninth. And, and that is where I always feel this phobia develops them and I always feel the phobia for math develops in the middle schools a lot because they were they get introduced to algebra and geometry more in six seven eight so uh, to deal with it is what I can say uh, the CBSC has not given any rationalization in eighth and ninth the CBSC has given only from ninth onwards till twelfth uh, there was only the schools will decide on what to do based on uh, the availability of time. But what we have done is we uh, did not cut short anything, but we prioritized the portions, uh, the syllabus. Uh, we, we, we just jotted down what are all the basic needs. We started actually working backward, starting from class eight, nine onwards. So we saw what is going to be useful for them in class nine. So we did not miss out on those things in class eight. And so we started working backwards like that. And in that way, we were able to at least touch upon things, if not in detail, at least the basic requirements and the concepts were, uh, you know, uh, were taught in class eight, which is useful for class nine. So that is how we were able to uh, bridge the gap a little bit. I'm talking about online classes. Thank you so much, Gauri. Yeah, I... And one minute. Uh, so ahead. Regarding racialization, this was a question from last side. And if it is, if, if I want to say about that in higher classes, yes, it was a challenge in math because, for example, I can say in class 12, uh, especially, uh, they had not, uh, uh, I mean, included uh, inverse of a function in the, the chapter relations and functions, but uh, they had a chapter in inverse trigonometric functions right next to it. And uh, all these concepts are applicable in derivatives when you find the derivative of an inverse function. Uh, so it became uh, required or it was just uh, uh, without uh, telling them why uh, we have to invert a function or what is the condition, we cannot go and teach inverse trigonometric functions at all. So we didn't have any deletions as such, I can say, except for few things which we thought completely we can delete, like small chapters or a unit inside a chapter, a section inside a chapter, like rate measure and all, we can just like that uh, delete it. So a lot of things we had to touch upon at least a little bit to continue the concepts in the upcoming chapters of the uh, subsequent chapter. So that was the challenge uh, we... Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's extremely challenging, this process. And I can imagine we can have an entire panel on only rationalization of a curriculum and what absolutely, is... Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but we ha I'm moving on. Uh, so there is another question. And uh, Neha, I would like if you can answer to that and I'll combine my question with it. So the question is that how would you, uh, for the especially elementary grades, how would you... This is from Neeta Batra. Uh, how would you do, first of all, engage uh, uh, assessment of the students? And second is, how do you make sure of their engagement, that everybody is engaged? Uh, so that uh, we have this feeling when we stand in a classroom, we have facial expressions and other things. So how do you manage that? And I will add my question to this is that you said that uh, pandemic sort of ma made you move towards uh, real life map. So why, what is it that why it was not there before pandemic and what made you do more real life math into the pandemic teaching? Uh, can you just... Uh... Right. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Shweta, for the question. Well, uh, during, the, the, during the pandemic, 
what we have introduced is real life math on the study table because they were not experiencing it what they were experiencing it before the pandemic there is something called experiential learning they go out they uh, experience stuff and there are there's a lot of learning behind it but we had to introduce this experiential kind of subject because that going out stopped so we tried to bring those those concepts to the study table by hands on kinesthetic learning uh, still uh, we, we wanted to ex- them to experience that on with some dummy things that could they could do some dummy concepts uh you know it's like uh, a miniature of the thing that they would have done when they would have gone out there's a lot of learning like estimation they can estimate when they go out uh, this much time we can do this if i play for these many hours then only i will be able to study for these many hours and nobody will scold me all that estimation had just stopped they were stuck at home so all that had to be brought to the study table with the help of a subject now introducing that subject making children realize that yes this is to be studied and also uh, making them interested in it was a challenge which uh, yes has been covered with the help of hands on and kinesthetic learning as far as the elementary uh, students are concerned how do we assess them i think uh, what what is the need let them just learn by the way they are they are small kids uh, we i as a mother with uh, two elementary kids at home i i personally feel that they are learning even if they are not being a step i can assure that they are learning if not the way they would have learned in school but this is a different way you know like uh, this is the organic learning happening i would say organic mm-hmm. learning if that's the right word uh, because they are just doing see we are busy with our classes father is busy with the, his own hard work the children are on their own they are experiencing stuff they are breaking stuff they are also attending classes there are thousand things in the laptop or in the devices that a 4 year old knows better than us and nobody would disagree to that so they are learning they would have not known that if they were in school i'm not saying they should not go to school but what is the need to assess oral assessment would be fine written work has been a challenge during the pandemic written work has been a challenge they are doing they are submitting we are checking but it's all virtual right it's all virtual i even if a day if there is a day when children come to school we ask them to please bring your notebook i want to see them it's been ages i haven't used a red pen you know i want to use it and my red pens are like just drying up for no reason so uh, elementary is the age just let, let them learn just let them learn you know at, at this age the cognitive development i believe changes after every two months so if in one session in one academic session there is there are children with a 10 month gap of age they will learn differently but we can't assess them at the same level thank you uh, it's a interesting philosophical point neha that you bring in about assessment but at the same time you are missing your red pen <laughs> yeah so, yeah theek <laughs> hai i think there are a lot of comments there and i am not going to, i think i won't be able to do justice to all of it uh, so the next question i, I think chanchal Uh, i'll uh, ask you uh, it's from vinay nair and along that there are some other comments uh, regarding the challenges that you faced and the use of worksheets that you are doing right now uh, so there is a question that how did you manage the uh, peer group learning uh, and did you use any technical uh, things uh, for that like how did you connected students now uh, when you have come over the challenges now uh, and then also uh, do you see any hesitation from students now that they are back in uh, school uh, so uh, chanchal would you like to respond to that hello hello yes you are audible chanchal go ahead see my own school will not reopen right now i am basically in, in uh, primary school and we have this adjoining middle school with us 
as far as students reactions is concerned i i think we need more time to kind of gather it just because it's the first day and let's see how how things uh will move further as far as this peer peer learning is concerned initially when the during this time when the schools were closed what we did uh, we used to call students to ask if they have other student nearby so if i if one student is saying that he has no access to phone we'll try to find out who is closely who is in in this, in this child's neighborhood and then we would say okay can two of you sit at one place during the class time can you share your worksheets so this is how we tried to connect one student with another one so there were cases that there, this one one child belong to section a the another child is from section c we tried to connect those students okay so maybe i'll just connect my question with uh, another question that is there for you uh, that uh, it's from uh, rashraf uh, and he's asking question that he or she i'm not sure my concern is according to you they have all the time to learn why are people around in haste to see stereotypical learning that is getting delayed and my <laughs> connection in complement like uh, addition to that is uh, what is this uh, everyone talking what loss of learning and what do you think sort of about it loss of learning everybody is talking loss of learning yeah see if you see learning with with those parameters in mind that okay these objectives are to be achieved then it's definitely loss of learning but this is if you see the existing situation this is learning for life learning to adapt so i think that you can always have time to catch up teacher can put in more effort student can put in more effort they can always access other material just to 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 learn what they have lost but this in this time period i particularly can't think if you have learned geometry or not because that's not my challenge my challenge is if i have survived it well if i am okay if if my mental health is fine if you will find students who are facing a lot more issues of of uh, i mean i don't know whether uh, this is very practical that uh, just four to five or six people share one room we have lot of girl child coming up and telling us the traumatic stories that what they have to see every day what they have to face every day some some neighbor is harassing them okay so in these circumstances we, we really don't think of anything other than are you mentally fine what kind yeah. of support we can provide you i think you connect uh, whatever you said you, it's connected to what uh, shavik bhattacharya and uh, ramanujam are asking they both are asking you in some sense that uh, you said some initially you were able to connect maybe just 10 students and yeah. then now you are at you have some hold on it so how do you manage this whole uh, people who missed everything what about uh, students girls who missed uh, education in the beginning uh, so what see we we do keep a record of worksheets and we start with uh, worksheet one only so if the child turn up after say two months we'll we'll start with the same worksheet he is left with so if you if you left your work at worksheet number 13 you will be given worksheet number 14 only not worksheet number 27 okay okay Thank you. although there is some challenge uh, uh, mentioned in the chat i uh, hope you take a look at it later somebody is saying that this specially unsynchronous where worksheets uh, so please go and read chat also all of you there are lots of comments for you i am not able to take all of them uh, i think there is general question for three of you uh, and maybe you don't have to answer right now it's uh, whether you had any support from scrts and other uh, government teacher education bodies uh, regarding this pandemic from jayashri subramanyam so it's i think for three of you so think about it i'll ask question to uh, umar and then i'll come back okay uh, umar uh, so one of the questions yeah. uh, yes i yeah. i had maine maine padh liya hai ji yeah jay shri ji namaste ji ji uh, but so, i have an additional uh, question umar uh, okay. i think jay shri is also asking more to the practicing teachers so i yeah. would also like to ask you uh, Uh, one question that uh, you said that you brought values into the uh, worksheets in your classroom discussion and there was appreciation by some of the people in the uh, group so and you said that question about caste and other things also uh, sometime come in so i wanted to know whether you have an advice how to handle some complicated sensitive issues in these discussion uh, yeah uh तो पहले मैं इसी बात का आंसर दे देता हूँ ये ये सिचुएशन आती है जैसे ही आप इन इश्यूज को खोलते हैं और जो मैं जिस स्टेट में काम कर रहा हूँ राजस्थान में 
बट देखिए टीचर्स के बीच ज्यादा आती है क्योंकि अब अब टीचर्स ऐसे बोलने लगे हैं देखिए काफी सारी दोनों तरफ के टीचर्स अपने आर्गुमेंट रखते हैं और कई बार वो मेल वर्सेस फीमेल टीचर्स हो जाता है कई बार वो कास्ट सिस्टम पे हो जाता है लेकिन हम लोग फिर बात यही करते हैं कि देखिए जो हमारे कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल वैल्यूज हैं उसकी रोशनी में अगर हम देखें तो लोगों को स्वीकारना पड़ता है कि आ, वो गलत कह रहे हैं कई लोग अचानक से कह देते हैं कि सर जात पात तो सब खत्म हो गया है लेकिन उन्हीं टीचर्स के बीच से कुछ लोग निकल आते हैं और कहते हैं कि नहीं है और स्कूल में तो चीजें अभी भी दिखाई पड़ती हैं कई लोग कहते हैं सर महिला पुरुष तो बराबर हो गया है लेकिन अब उन्हीं महिला शिक्षिकाओं में से बहुत सारी टीचर्स हैं जो बात रखती है कि कोई एम महिला क्यों नहीं है या कोई की रिसोर्स पर्सन महिला क्यों नहीं है तो ये डिस्कोर्स निकलता है और फिर हम हम ये बात करते हैं देखिए आप इन्हीं बातों को बच्चों के पास सरल ढंग से ले जाइए ये ठीक है आपने अपनी जिंदगी में ये कॉम्प्लेक्सिटीज फेस कर रहे हैं तो कम से कम हमारे क्लासरूम में बच्चे ये तो नहीं ये ना फेस करे ना और कोविड ने तो ये दिखा दिया कि जो गरीब है जो ज्यादा वंचित है उसने और ज्यादा कष्ट झेला है यानी जो जो बच्चों के घर में फोन ही नहीं है आ, कैसे पढ़ेगा जयश्री जी जो बात कर रही है कि क्या एस आई आर टी डाइट और इनसे सपोर्ट रहा हाँ उन्होंने तुरंत शुरू किया स्माइल वन स्माइल टू प्रोग्राम इन राजस्थान और वो टीचर्स के उसमें आता था टीचर ट्रेनिंग का भी उन्होंने ऑनलाइन किया जिसमें हम जाके देखते थे तो टीचर अपना फोन ऑन करके आ, आ, अपने गांव का सर्वे भी कर रहे हैं और टीचर्स ने फोन भी ऑन कर रखा है देखिए कैसा प्लानिंग है एक तो टीचर को जाके पता भी करना है कि कोई बम्बई दिल्ली अहमदाबाद से आया है और उसने अपना टेस्ट कोविड टेस्ट कराया है या नहीं कराया है और उसी समय उसका एक ऑनलाइन ट्रेनिंग भी चल रहा है तो वो जेब में ऑन करके घूमते थे और बोलते थे कि सर इसको ऑन रखना पड़ता है क्योंकि हमारा इस पे सर्टिफिकेट आता है कि हमने इसको ज्वाइन किया और आजकल ये कंपलसरी है तो हमारे टीचर एक तरफ बिल्कुल फ्रंट लाइन वर्कर बन के काम कर रहे थे और दूसरी तरफ ये सब चीजें थी ये जो स्माइल ऐप के प्रोग्राम थे स्माइल वन बच्चों के पास अगर एंड्रॉइड फोन नहीं है जिन घरों में है भी तो पिता के पास है और पिता अपने काम में जा रहे हैं रोजगार को तो बच, गरीब बच्चों के पास तो ये उनके हाथों तक आया ही नहीं तब फिर सोचना पड़ा हमारे यहाँ सरकार ने भी काफी जल्दी वर्कबुक डेवलप करी काफी फास्ट और उन्होंने हर बच्चे के लिए भेजा कि बच्चे कुछ कुछ करें एक और काम किया कि देखिए अब हमने अपने स्ट्रक्चर्स ऐसे बनाए हैं डाइट एस आई जिसमें टेक्नोलॉजी को लेके बहुत रेजिस्टेंस है टेक्नो फ्रेंडली लोग नहीं हैं अभी कुछ साल पहले तक लोग पुराना टाइपराइटर लेके वहां होते थे कंप्यूटर से उनको डर लगता था अब लेकिन धीरे धीरे जब ये चैलेंज आया है तो उन्होंने भी काफी हद तक चीजें सीखी हैं और हमारे साथ मिलके उन्होंने कई सारे बहुत अच्छे ऑनलाइन प्रोग्राम किए हमको इन, हम लोगों को इनवाइट किया इनफैक्ट हम एक हवा महल प्रोग्राम चलाते हैं जिसमें हवा महल प्रोग्राम में स्टोरी जिसमें एक साउंड ट्रैक होगा और रीडिंग का मटेरियल भी होगा और वो आ, कोशिश की जाती है कि बच्चों तक पहुंचे कम से कम जिन बच्चों के घर में ये व्हाट्सएप का कनेक्शन है वहां तक पहुंचे तो मुझे लगता है जैसे हम लोग सीख रहे हैं वो लोग भी सीख रहे हैं लेकिन उनको थोड़ा तेज गति से चलना होगा क्योंकि देखिए इस देश की हम हम इंतजार हम हमारे इंस्टीट्यूशन ये इंतजार क्यों करते रहे कि पैंडेमिक आएगा और तब वो ये सब टेक्नोलॉजी से बात कर रहे इस देश में कंप्यूटर से शिक्षा की बात तो बहुत पहले से हो रही है और हमारे इंस्टीट्यूशंस में बैठे हुए लोग ही टेक्नोलॉजी से अभी यूज टू नहीं हो पाए हैं सबसे पहले उनकी ट्रेनिंग करनी होगी उनकी कैपेसिटी बिल्डिंग करनी होगी और उनको टेबल बनाना होगा और कुछ काम मिल करना होगा थैंक यू जी उमर या आप आई थिंक दोनों सवाल के बियॉन्ड जाके आपने बात की बहुत शुक्रिया उसके बारे में और आपने जो स्टोरी टेलिंग के बारे में बात की है हमारे ऑडियंस में आई थिंक एटलीस्ट तीन टीचर्स हैं 
जिन्होंने जिनके पास काफी इंटरेस्टिंग एक्सपीरियंस और वीडियोस भी है जो शेयर करना चाहते हैं बट आई डोंट थिंक वी हैव टाइम सो बट उमर प्लीज गो थ्रू ऑल द कमेंट्स देर आर सम स्पेसिफिक कमेंट्स अबाउट स्टोरी टेलिंग एंड एक्सपीरियंस ओके आवर टाइम इज अप एट ट्वेल्व ओ क्लॉक आई एम जस्ट गोइंग टू एक्सटेंड फॉर टू मिनट्स एंड दिस मीटिंग विल एंड एट टू मिनट्स uh because i just found out that uh, jyoti is also there uh, in this uh, 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 group right now and jyoti dr jyoti sethi is the one who actually assembled this panel but she has teaching so she couldn't uh, chair this session and uh, uh, i replaced her but jyoti right now that you are here we would really like to hear for a minute uh, your opinion your thoughts uh, on this and you have 2 minutes sorry uh, jyoti can someone uh, uh, give jyoti access to unmute yeah thank you so much jyoti go ahead jyoti you try again now you are a co-host uh, i think uh, harita just made you co-host try again okay she can't speak theek uh, hai uh, i also wanted to hear from neha chanchal and gauri about this whole role of scrt and government teacher education bodies uh, support for uh, how to tra do transition from offline to online and now back to offline but maybe there is no time uh, i i don't know we don't have a way right now that we will share each other's opinion but hopefully we'll figure out something soon yeah jasneet has also shared her experience so theek hai uh, we'll stop here and thank you so much to all the panelists and everyone who took part and asked question many questions are unanswered and i think the challenge is still not over uh, so but we'll stop here and next session is at uh, 12:15 uh, harita has pasted link in this chat group harita you have some announcement then you can take a minute or a half a minute yeah uh hello everyone so couple of announcement one thing is that people have been writing to me about the attendance so uh, don't worry we aren't uh, sharing any attendance sheet to people uh, zoom analytics anyway give us uh, which individual has spent how much of time so your attendance is by default given to us uh if you would like to uh, participate and volunteer in a cultural program i would suggest you to please write to the uh, email address mentioned here M T A I N C O N F M T A India Conference, and uh, Shweta will be chair uh, of that session. So uh, please uh, do volunteer by today evening or tomorrow afternoon. The next session we will start at twelve fifteen. I would uh, I have already shared the link on the chat box. So please join uh, that meeting at twelve fifteen. See you in fifteen minutes. Bye. Thank you, Shweta. Thank you. Thank you, Raj. All of you. Thank you, Jyoti. Though I'm not seeing you, thank you so much. Harita, like yesterday, we can meet just for five minutes. Come on. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. So thank much. you. Thank you. No, no. We have to like switch to the other meeting. Otherwise, people are still keep coming here only. Oh, thank you, Harita. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, bye, Neha, Chanchal, Gauri, and Umar. Bye, everyone. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye everybody. Bye.